good evening all welcome to this new session we will try to see about pseudo lesions so what is pseudo lesion pseudo lesion is nothing but a focal mass like finding observed only on diagnostic imaging without any actual histopathological abnormality so even sometimes external objects foreign bodies even convex structures normal structures can also mimic as pseudo lesions so we will try to see some common pseudo lesions in imaging so first this is anopastified this is you can see anopastified or partially opastified azygous vein or pulmonary veins can mimic uh, lymph nodes even here you can see anopastified um, hepatic veins can mimic hypodense lesions here you can see this is a scalloped nodular appearance of the diaphragm can mimic lesions and they can even indent liver and spleen here you can see this is laminar flow in the inferior vena cava can mimic uh, thrombosis here you can see transient subendometrial or mammatorial enhancement in early arterial parenchymal phase of uterus can mimic lesions. Even early arterial phase there is heterogeneous enhancement of the spleen that is excessive enhancement of the red pulp with uh, hyponancing white pulp. So this gives the differential enhancement or zebra pattern. This is normal and should not be uh, mistaken for a pathology, abnormal pathologies and they should be seen in the delayed phases or venous phase. Sometimes even uh, bone bone variants and anatomical variants like uh, humeral calcaneal pseudocyst, ward triangles, rhomboid fossa, radial tuberosity can also mimic uh, bone lesions. Even biparitate patella can mimic bone fracture. This is acute fracture like thing. Even bindi on the forehead, even beetle that is especially those who chew tobacco, beetle quid, pan, chewing gum in the mouth can mimic oral pathologies. So definitely re repeat the scan after spitting. Hematopoietic eye lines uh, within the actual skeleton can mimic osteoblastic metastasis. Even uh, marrow hyperplasia or reconversion that is reconversion of the yellow marrow into the red marrow that red marrow anywhere in the bones appear in hypointense on T1 and T2 and heterogeneous to hyperintense star which should not be mistaken for bone pathologies or marrow pathologies and sometimes even uh, renal column of Bertin or fetal lobulation, lobulation or dromedary hump can mimic renal pseudo lesions. So this is the one chart about all the common pseudo lesions in imaging. Next, we'll try to see some interesting cases. This patient presented with excessive vaginal uh, excessive vaginal bleeding. So this is a uh, hyper. Uh, there is hyperintensity in the posterior lip of uh, cervix with edematous thick and posterior lip of cervix. But there is a well-defined hyperintense lesion noted in the vagina. So with this smooth borders, it is not uh, showing any other adjacent changes in the vaginal wall. So we suspected some foreign body. So we then we have asked the p p history of the patient. So it was a vaginal pack which was kept in the vagina to stop the bleeding. So this is other. Uh, this is the similar uh, uh, case after removing the vaginal pack. You can see this is the normal vagina. So sometimes even vaginal packs can mimic vaginal pathologies or even cervical pathologies. Which is vaginal pack they are used to reduce the bleeding or hematoma formation and even infections. And uh, repeat imaging should be done after the taking out these vaginal packings to uh, to avoid the confusion. So this is that vaginal pack and this sometimes this thread will be there, radio opaque thread which can be say, directed on the radiographs and CT. And this is the illustration which shows uh, vaginal pack. So vaginal pack can also mimic vaginal pathologies or even cervical pathologies. Next case, uh, this is that vaginal pack. Next case, here you can see uh, this is the liver. There you can see there is a hypodense collection and with ill defined mortal air foci with adjacent free fluid. So, this was a post op case. So, we thought this as an infection or abscess, but later they correlating with the surgical history. This is nothing but surgical. Surgical is nothing but surgical hemostatic material which is absorbable oxidized cellulose material in a sterile fabric meshwork, uh, meshwork which is mostly applied in the bleeding area. It swells into brownish and black gelatinous mass and prevents the clotting process. Process. So, uh, don't mistake the surgical cell, especially in the liver or in the opposed op sites, and mistake them for other abscess or collections or fistula strats. Here, this is the other case we have taken from the journal. You can see hypodense collection, hypodense lesion with peripheral mortal layer foci noted within the noted behind the bladder and anterior to the uterus. So, this is nothing but a surgical cell. Uh, so this was the journal from which I have taken this image and this is the surge cell for your uh, reference you can see this is the surge cell which is commonly kept in post-op cases to prevent the bleeding don't mistake them for infection or abscess or even sometimes fistula strats or even gossip bioma. Next, uh, this is other case where you can see the patient there is a uh, hyperdense area noted in the uh, forehead and the nasofrontal region with dense artifact. So and here also you can see VRT reconstructions the lesion is there. It is not attached to the bone clearly seen outside the bone. So then uh, retrospectively we have found that this is a uh, large bindi or kumkum which is uh, kept uh, traditionally. So this is a large bindi foreheads and even sometimes uh, turmeric and even rice can be mixed with this uh, th uh, and applied on the forehead as tilak. So these can produce artifacts and then can mimic pseudo lesions. 
next case even here you can see this is a long elongated hair braid hair braid which mimics not which mimics the lesion but after removing the hair braid you can see uh, the lesion is not there so this is a pseudo lesion so hair braids and even hair ponytails and hair styles can also mimic pseudo lesions so artifacts of, of the hair are more when it is wet or heavily oiled or tightly bundled like ponytail or braid and sometimes in case of trauma where it is saturated with blood or foreign bodies so always try to see the history and remove the hair hair at hair braids or hairy ponytails and then do the imaging to prevent over diagnosis here also you can see this is the normal deltoid insertion this is the normal deltoid muscle with deltoid insertion but here you can see there is a prominence of the bony bony area at the level of deltoid insertion and which mimics the pseudo tumor deltoides and also this is the hypertrophic deltoid so some, and even sometimes intracortical lucency will be so uh, prominent that it can mimic fibrocortical defect or even bony pathologies or bony neoplasms so don't mistake this uh, deltoid insertion as uh, pathologies and this entity is called pseudo tumor deltoides which is a no touch technique no touch lesion and don't do biopsies for these cases next uh, this is also the case where you can see this is the true sah that hyperdense collection in the basal cisterns along the ciliary fissures this is pseudo sah that is diffuse cerebral edema with relative hyperdensities of the fox tentorial leaf and along the ciliary fissures so this is the sah and this is the pseudo sah and sometimes air in the sinuses cerebral convexity vessels vessel pulsations csf pulsations bones external objects foreign bodies flare and diffusion weighted images can produce artifacts and can mimic pseudo lesions next these are the other calvarial pseudo lesions you can see this is uh, uh, here you can see this is a um, uh, parasitical occipital arachnoid granulation this is occipital encephalocele these are sometimes vascular canal canals or lacunae this is hyperostosis frontalis interna these are bilateral thinning of parietal bones these are bilateral enlarged parietal foramina this is sinus pericranii which is congenital and this is acquired after ventricular peritoneal drainage so these can be mimic pathologies or calvarial pseudo lesions and coming to common pseudo lesions also encountered in the liver which is mostly due to portal vein obstruction with consequent increased arterial flow maybe due to arterial portal shunts arterial venous shunts even uh, compression of the adjacent veins by the liver parenchyma and due to focal compression of liver by external structures like ribs or diaphragm they are common around gall bladder fossa anterior aspect of left lobe and along the medial aspect of left lobe and anterior to the right portal vein sometimes focal fatty sparing and excessive fatty deposition in the liver can also mimic pseudo lesions here you can see this is the transient hepatic attenuation difference this is early hyperenhancement noted in the arterial phase but later in the subsequent venous phases it has completely disappeared so this is transient hepatic attenuation difference and this is the diffuse fatty infiltration of the liver with focal fat sparing this can also mimic pseudo lesion thank you all